Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. On behalf of the Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health of Trinity Health of New England, I want to invite you and welcome you to another episode. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring in brief tools and for wellness that will benefit our colleagues and our community. And Tim Michaels and I are here again this week, and this week we're going to focus on um, discovering and using our own strengths. And our, our strengths are tendencies um, and uh, personality traits and tendencies that come uh, easy for us and naturally for, naturally for us. And I think one of the challenges that I had, Tim is a, is a real expert in understanding these personality mm -hmm. traits. No, you are, you are, and you have such good words. One of the challenges that I had is understanding how, although it might be my strength, it might not be something that I like. Correct. Right? <laughs> and so that's, that's uh, I find that just fascinating. So can you tell me a little bit about, or tell, tell us all, tell me again. <laughs> About. Well, so let's just uh, let's just use some basic common things. First of all, um, language is really important in labels. So no matter what tool you're looking at that helps you understand this, they all use different labels. And the yeah. problem is, is we try to design our life by achieving a label or a job description. So I want to become senior executive of sales of software. Well, that would be great, but it might include a whole bunch of tasks that actually you dread. Right type of thing. So a simpler way to think about it too is I'm 6'4". The assumption was tall people play basketball and you'd be good at it, right? Well, I don't like basketball and I'm not coordinated and I'm not good at it. So take that off the list. Your assumption that I have the gift is wrong. But I also have a nephew who loved to play soccer. He just loved being on teams, loved being with everybody. He wasn't the greatest soccer player but he loved it and put the energy into it. So I put it this way, he'll never get a soccer league contract to make big bucks, but you really want him on the team because he brings such incredible energy. So strengths are things that we like, that we put energy into. We may not be great at them, but it helps us get into a flow. We can also have strengths that we're built with, just like you said, you're really good at it. Like I'm extremely good at Excel spreadsheets. I don't mind doing them in a pitch hit, but I hate doing them all the time. It bores me to tears. It's just like technology. I'll figure out how to plug it in. Do not assign me TIS tasks all the time, IT tasks. Drive me crazy. So, yeah. but the real reason we want to kind of bring it up right now is, and I don't know about for you, but I think we've lost our connection and understanding about how to use a free moment to relax, enjoy, get in the zone. Yeah. I think for most of us, early on COVID, we were trying to figure out how to get through the grocery store, how to find toilet paper, how not to get sick, how to find masks. And if you were in healthcare, you were just trying to survive getting through your shift and the yeah. donning and the doffing and the PPE. And you were just so tired all the time. So I think this conversation around rediscovering what your strengths and interests are can really help you begin to decide where do I want to invest time now to build my resiliency. Does that make a little bit more sense? Yeah, it makes tons of sense, yes. And rediscovering that thing, that whatever it is, that process, that um, piece of us that we really enjoy. And you talked a little bit about getting um, in the flow. And so yeah. doing something and you know you sit down to do it and you think, oh, I'll spend 10 minutes doing this. And then it's two hours later, and the time went by like that. That flow is what we're aiming for, right? We're productive, we're enjoying it. That's what we're aiming for. And so we're looking for those things that, that captivate us so much. And it could be spreadsheets, and it could be right. playing the guitar, and it could be, I don't know, what, another skill. Uh, for some people, they, they just, um, it's the immersion into spring cleaning. Right. They love it, they're organized, it makes sense in their head how to dismantle a room and remantle it, and where other people see it as drudgery, um, they're really flowing. Um, so let's for a minute give a couple of examples. So you and I both work for Trinity Health of New England, and we have a tool that we've been trying to really build into our culture called Standout. Now, Marcus Buckingham's tool is based a lot on positive psychology, which is really driven by a lot of the work of Say his name, please. I'm just going to say it wrong. Go ahead. 
Marty Seligman. Thank you so much. And I apologize, <laughs> Marty, if you're listening. I was practicing your name, but I can never get the last name right. But really, a lot of his work around um, two things. We are typically negative biased. So we're always going to look at what we don't do well compared to whom and focus on the deficit. Well, the old saying is true, what you feed grows. So I have to work on my skills. I have to work on my gifts and develop them. Even Because you have a gift doesn't mean it's well developed. But if I have a deficit that I don't want to use, it's not impacting my life, why am I focusing on it? Yeah. Right? Sometimes I have to get comfortable doing public speaking. But I also want to look at my other gifts of organizing, collecting data, researching, and really be focusing on how do I build them. So we want to do that positive psychology of I'm doing good, I want to boost myself, let's increase my attention to the areas that put me in the flow. So it almost becomes a mindfulness activity, and it can become a little daunting at first to say, well, when was the last time you were in the flow? I can't remember. Okay, so when was the last time that you noticed you weren't watching the clock? And what right. were you doing? Maybe it's a simple thing, you were just making muffins and you didn't care what time it was, you didn't care who had to go where, you just were enjoying it. That's an important thing to remember. It is. So do you remember your um, top two strengths coming I out do. of stand -out? I so, am a creator and a connector. So this is, so. all right, so you're creator, connector, and I'm connector, influencer. The hard part about this is we don't go to cocktail parties and saying, hi, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm your local connector influencer, right? <laughs> we don't talk that way. So let's break it down. What are one or two things when you read about your strengths that really stand out for you? Where are you really seeing that pop for you right now? So I think the, um, the creator piece is I love a project of any kind. I could jump into a workflow diagram, as you've seen me doing in the past few months, but I can also jump into repairing a ceiling project. I really like the idea of, I like to use my hands, I like to organize things in space, and I like them to look neat and organized and in a row. So that creator piece fits me, I think, both at home and at work. Great. So, you know, Standout gives you this great feature where you can say, come to me when. So it would be fun for you to put a statement out on yours that says, you know, come to me when. You're in charge of a project and that's not your strong suit. Uh, let me come in and, and give you uh, ideas about how to start, how to get your thoughts out of your head onto the wall, um, how to create a plan that makes sense and hits all the points. Because to you, that, that puts you in your zone, right? Yeah, I like it. Type of thing. So for me, um, it's really interesting. I look at my top four because they're all very close together. And, and when I'm kind of looking at it that way, what I'm aware of is um, I really do like to help people learn things, but where I, where I really, people might think that I'm uh, too personal or nosy, but I'm always curious about who you are, what you're about, because as soon as you tell me, I can think of three other people I want you to start working with, and I can mm -hmm. guarantee you they will not be in your organization, I'll break some boundaries or something, um, it happened today. We were on the phone with somebody who does um, acupuncture, and I'm talking about a group of clinicians who run a homeless clinic attached to a shelter, and it would be really good if we got you together because they have the space, they have the need, they have the addiction issues, let's get you all together, right? Right. Um, and I'll let everybody else worry about the rules and working it out, but my brain automatically goes, great. I have two like people with the same energy, let's bring them together and make it happen. And then mm -hmm. I get excited. Where you love the planning part, I start to want to take a nap. See, once <laughs> we... <laughs> so I know that in our relationship, we really hit a great moment if you're jiving with the great idea, and then I just see you drawing on colored paper, sticking it on the wall. I'm good. You I'm on it. to the next connection in the hallway. Um, and, and I'm kind of uh, like that little kid who keeps bringing home animals that they find. So every time I find an employee in the hallway and I realize they need something, I just bring them on back in because they have a skill we'll need later on and I have something I want them to do now. So our standout tool right now can really help people. I'm not worried about if you're looking at it weekly, I'm not worried about all the formal steps, but it right. gives you some really insightful thoughts about, wow, if I committed to trying to bring my attention to try to do that at least once a day, 
I wonder if I would be feeling different. So, but for folks who aren't part of Trinity, um, there's been some other things that we've been looking at. So, yeah. and I know that you looked at the um, uh, the course on the science of well-being with Laura Santos at Yale as well. So worth the time. So it is a free class with Coursera, and it's uh, Dr. Lori Santos, and she teaches the science of well-being. And she talks about how when we know our strengths, we can understand why some things are are not things that we like doing, but also figure out how to be in the flow for a higher percentage of our awake time, right? And so that's at work and at home, spending at least some time every week doing stuff that speaks to us. And, and with her, um, her analysis, you can kind of drill down a little bit and really take a step back and say, oh, I get it. That's what I can focus on this week. And the other thing that she, she shows is that um, when you know your things that you're not so strong on, that those are things that we can build up and we can work on. And just understand, that's okay. We're not going to have strengths in every category. Right. And I also love that. Now, her language is a little different. So if you're interested in that course at the end, you'll see a slide that talks about it. But there's a lot of studies that back up her work, including back to, you know, Martin's work from positive psychology. But he right. was a real driver. So that course connects you with an organization called the VIA Character Institute. And you can go to their website and take a free assessment, and they tell you your 24 signature strengths. Now, their labels are a little bit more familiar common language every day, but when you begin to read the descriptions and they put them in order for your, the, how you answer the survey, you're going to begin to realize, boy, it's been a while since I focused that way. Let me make a commitment to doing it. So, again, this, this approach to strengths, uh, number one, it'll strike you that it feels a little selfish because you really have to push things aside saying, I'm going to carve out this time and do something that puts me in that zone. I'm getting a little blissful uh, doing it, and I'm not as stressed about everything else around me. Um, not judging what it is. You may want to build a brick wall, chop wood, uh, retile a kitchen wall. I, I don't know. But it's investing into using that strength that puts you in that zone. So, you know, Marcus Buckingham has one tool that kind of helps you understand it. The VIA Character Institute has one. There's another group called Positive Psychology. I call them my friends in the Netherlands. They're yeah. fabulous to listen to their videos, but they do some great talking around recognizing your strengths, recognizing the situations they were present in, and shifting your focus to your more positive bias. Don't look at the situations that went wrong. Look at the ones that you were really enjoying. What were you doing? Who were you doing it with? Where were you? And is that something if you can repeat to rebuild that positive type of experience? So it's a fun topic, and there's enough out there in the world. We gave three good examples. But I think it's going to take some practice for all of us to start to try to remember what helps us get in the zone. I agree. And when we're in the zone, Lori Santos has great data that shows we are just happier. And when we're happier, we're kinder. When we're kinder, we work better both at home and in our, our chosen jobs. So who doesn't want to be happier? Yes, yeah. and feel kinder. And feel kinder, absolutely. Right, beautiful. Thanks so much, Kathy. Thanks, Tim.